You are probably sitting there wondering how to get a PenFed credit card, right? So in today's conversation, I have uh, the top five hacks that will get you approved right away if you're looking for a PenFed credit card approval. So don't go anywhere if you're interested in this topic. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you were to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee, RT, or a vodka, and let's roll. In today's conversation, I want to talk to you about PenFed credit card approval, and I'm giving you today five hacks that will get you approved right away. The first thing you need to do is to lower your DTI. It's very important. I don't care how much money you're making. I don't care how much uh, income you're pulling in every month. You need to keep your DTI low. And we're speaking about keeping your DTI at 35% or less. What is DTI? DTI stands for debt to income ratio. Okay. And this is basically will compare this number will compare your monthly debt expenses to your monthly gross income. So to calculate your DTI, you want to add up all the payments you make towards your debt during an average month. Okay, this includes your monthly credit card payments, your car loans, other debts. For example, it can be payday loans or investment loans and housing expenses, either rents or the cost of the cost for your mortgage principal plus interest. So you take all of these things and you put it at, as the numerator of the fraction. And then in the for the denominator, you take your income. Okay, you want to divide that total total debt payment. You want to divide it by your monthly you want to divide it by your monthly gross income. So that's your income before taxes are de deducted. Let me give you an example. If you pay $400 on credit cards, $200 on car loans, and $1,400 in rent, your total monthly debt commitment is $2,000, right? You follow? And if you make $60,000 a year, your monthly gross income is $60,000 divided by 12, and this is $5,000 a month. So your debt to income ratio in this scenario is what? 40% because you divide 2,000 divided by, you divide 2,000 by 5,000, which works out to 0.4. Or 40 percent and your dti is really important because lenders and credit card issuers and pen fed uh, uh, pen fed underwriters they will pay attention to how much you are doing when it comes to managing your dti okay and while the preferred maximum dti varies from lender to lender with pen fed you want to keep it at 35 percent to increase your chances of credit card approval very important and how do you lower your dti talk to me Talk to me about lowering your DTI. You can do a lot of things right now. Right now, I want you to write it down. I want you to write this down. You can increase the amount of the amount you pay monthly towards your debt. Extra payments can help lower your overall debt more quickly. You want to avoid taking on more debts. Talk to me about that. Those are things that will help you in the long run, not just to get a credit card from PenFed, but, but for other stuff. You want to postpone large purchases so you, so you are basically using less credit. Okay, and you want to recalculate your debt to income ratio monthly to see if you're making progress or not. And before you apply for the PenFed credit card, make sure that your DTI once again is 35% or less. The sweet spot is 30%. The second thing you need to do, and this is the second hack, very important. I want you to write it down. You want to lower your CUR. You want to keep your credit utilization ratio at 35% or less. Same thing here. Same thing. When we talk about when we talk about CUR, we think we're talking about what? Making on-time payments and also keeping your overall credit low. And here when we talk about CUR, we are speaking about revolving revolving credits, okay? Credit cards and all and lines of credit. So making on-time payments is the number one factor in maintaining a good credit score, right? But after that, lenders such as PenFed, they look at your credit utilization ratio or how much you are spending in comparison to the total of your credit card limits. Okay, this is important. So your credit utilization rate or ratio makes up 30% of your FICO credit score. Think about it, 30%. And the first one, your payment history is 35%. So this is actually very, very important. So how do you calculate? your credit utilization to calculate your cur you want to divide your total outstanding balances across all your credit cards by your total credit limits then you want you want to multiply by 100 to get the percentage 
For example, if you carry the average credit card balance of, uh, let's say, 6,194 in your card, and also had the average credit card limit of uh, 22,751, you would divide the first by the second and multiply by 100. So in this case, your CUR will be 27%, okay? So you want to actually maintain the CUR at or below 35%. The lower, the better. Please, this is, this is important. Your goal is to keep, to have a lower CPR, not CPR, <laughs> CUR before you contact PenFed because they're going to check that. And it's important to understand that your goal at the end of the day is to make sure that you present a nicer uh, FICO score. And it doesn't matter whether you have a, a fair a fair FICO score, a good FICO score, or an excellent FICO score, the CUR will still matter. And there are several ways you can lower your CUR. You can pay off your balances more than once a month. Okay, so instead of making a one-time payment, you can pay three or four times a month. You can request a higher credit limit. You can avoid closing credit cards. Never close credit cards. I don't care if the, as long as the credit card is not charging you an annual fee, please keep it. You want to maintain some history here. This is important. All right. And let me quickly talk to you about, I want to dig a little deeper here when we talk about uh, improving your CUR. And by improving, I mean lowering your CUR. You can request a higher credit limit, but make sure that you request this strategically because anytime you contact your credit card issuer for a higher credit limit, you might initiate a hard pull. And the goal here is to actually limit the number of times you have a hard pull, right? Because anytime you have a hard pull, your credit score is going to go lower. 5.10 points, all this add up. So be very strategic here. And uh, so the thing here is if you have four or five credit cards or let's say you have three credit cards or four credit cards right now, before you contact PenFed, before you apply for a PenFed credit card, you want to contact your your uh, your existing um, credit card issuers and ask for a little limit increase. This could be five grand, it could be 10 grand, the higher the better. As long as you're comfortable with the, uh, with the little thing you're gonna have in the credit score when you get a hard pull, okay? This is important. And you also have, there are a lot of, there are many reasons why you might ask for a higher limit. How do you justify having a higher credit limit? You can talk about your income has gone up. Let's say that you got promoted at work, you have, uh, you have, uh, I don't know, you have a new job with uh, better, with better pay. You can even talk to the credit card issuer about the fact that you have a, a better credit score. Let's say your credit score has uh, increased from 670 or 675 to 780 or 750. This could be a great opportunity to talk to the credit card issuer and say, listen, I think I deserve a higher credit limit. The bottom line here is that you want to lower your CUR. Now, avoid closing your credit cards i've said this before i'm going to say it again i don't care if you have a credit card that you opened 10 years ago or 15 years ago it doesn't matter leave it there as long as they're not charging you anything you're not losing any money you, you can just leave it in your leave it in your credit report that way you can build history and history is very important when it comes to credit score okay and other ways to lower your cur increase your income should you get a second job do you want to have a do you want to have a, a sad gig because the opportunity to the ability to generate extra income will help you pay down your debt whether whether we're speaking about installment loans or credit cards this will help you lower your cur but also your dti so this is really good it works in a fantastic way that when you're working on uh, reducing your dti you are you can also reduce your uh, cur at the same time so this is really great i'll be right back right after this don't go anywhere Welcome back, folks, to another section of the Awesome Street Kiwi Show. I'm still uh, talking to you today about PenFed credit card approval. I'm giving you the top five hacks that you need to know if you want to be approved right away. And the first thing is, is to lower your DTI. Second thing, you want to lower your CUR. The third thing is you want to lower your card count. This is important. And I'm talking about, when I'm talking about lowering your card count, I am speaking about reducing the number of cards that you carry with PenFed and with other credit card issuers. This is important. With PenFed, your chances are slim if you already have two credit cards with the institution. In other words, if you have two credit cards already and you are looking for a third one, they will look at you like, mm, no, 
really but if you have only one this is if you have one or none you could qualify for a new credit card okay let's quickly go through the credit cards that PenFed offers it's, it's important because I want to uh, explain to you that some of these cards can be complementary or some can be supplementary so you can use some of them as a supplement you can actually use them as a complement or they are totally different things so we have the power cash rewards visa signature card with this card you have a, this is a cashback card you have two percent cashback on all purchases if you are a PenFed honors uh, advantage member you have 1.5 percent cashback on all purchases $100 bonus statement credit when you spend $1,500 in the first 90 days. There's no annual fee on this card and the purchase variable APR $1,499 to $1,799% and they have a 0% promo APR on balance transfers for 12 months if you are a new customer. Wonderful. You have the gold visa card. Here you have a low APR on purchases. $100 bonus statement credit when you pay when you spend $1,500 in the first 90 days. There's no annual fee and the purchase APR is it goes from 7.49 to 17.99 percent this is really good okay you have the platinum rewards visa signature card here you have this is a, a, a rewards uh, credit card you have 5x points on gas paid at the pump and EV charging stations 3x points at the supermarket including most Target and Walmart locations restaurants and TV radio cable streaming services 1x points on all your other purchases and you have a 15,000 bonus points when you spend fifteen hundred dollars in your first night uh, first 90 days the variable APR here 13.49 percent to 17.99 percent and the last one is the pen fed pathfinder rewards visa signature card here you get a fifty thousand bonus points when you spend three thousand in the first 90 days four x points on all travel categories three three x points on all travel categories if you are not a, a non pen if you're not a pen fed honors advantage member and you have 1.5 x points on all other purchases and the card has an annual fee of 95 dollars so this is really important the reason why I'm showing you all these cards is because you really want to think about whether or not you want to have multiple credit cards from uh, PenFed. If you already have two, please do not apply for a third one unless you are really sure, unless you have a strong relationship with the with the institution or you have an excellent credit score. But if you have one, you could apply for a second one, or if you have none, you could apply for your first credit card. Not a problem, and you'll be approved. As long as you take care of, uh, you are able to lower your DTI, lower your CUR, make sure that your credit card count in general is also good. So I was telling you that you want to maintain a lower credit card count, not only with uh, PenFed, but also with other issuers. This is important. The question is, is it good to have multiple credit cards? Big question, right? Well, it depends, folks. I want you to I want you to tell me why do you want to have multiple credit cards? Is it because you need to have uh, you need to have some liquidity? Need is it you need to take care of some cash flow problems? Do you want to build your credit? Have you been around for a while? In other words, have you have uh, have you maintained a credit history for twenty years, twenty five years, thirty years? Talk to me about that. What are your needs? How many credit cards should you have now? Nobody has a clear answer and no expert is going to tell you, hey, listen, I think you should have four or five credit cards. No, because it really depends on your financial situation. It depends on your cash inflows and cash outflows. It depends on your family's financial situation. Credit cards are not just for liquidity needs or for building credit. Credit cards will help you have a financially responsible life. They teach you discipline. They teach you resilience. OK, so I could say you can have a credit, you can have a three or four credit cards. So one for travel rewards, one for cashback, one for perks, depending on your, depending on your family situation. But at the end of the day, it's all about the institution that you have the credit cards with. It's all about because this is important. This, the institutions will play an important role. For example, you have the Chase 524 rule, right? Chase wants to make sure that you apply for only five credit cards within, within the last 24 months. So. It's also about uh, your uh, credit utilization ratio. Remember, the more debt you carry, the uh, the riskier your financial profile becomes. But if you have a lot of credit cards and those credit cards have a zero outstanding balance, this could lower dramatically your CUR because you're gonna you're gonna have access to credit, but you're not using the credit. That tells the lender that you are potentially. A safer bet when it comes to issuing a credit card or a loan 
or granting a loan. So PenFed will want you to will want to see that also, but you really want to lower your credit card count in general. Hack number four. So folks, hack number one, you want to lower your DTI. Hack number two, you want to lower your uh, CUR. Hack number three, you want to lower your, your card counts with PenFed, but also with other institutions. And hack number four, you want to apply for credit sporadically. Okay, this is important. Please, if you are listening to me right now, you're sitting there and just listening to me, please do not apply for a credit, a credit card or a loan or a line of credit more than one every three months. Okay, do not apply for, for credit more than once every three months. The best frequency is two to three times a year. It's important. I want you to watch those sneaky hard pulls. I want you to be very careful here because anytime you apply for credit, you are getting a hard pull. Okay, do not apply for credit more than once every three months. And the cool thing here is that, and why? Because PenFed is going to look at your account and say, hmm, this person is applying for credit too often. What's going on? What is the problem? Is it because maybe she's having uh, a financial financial uh, crisis or maybe he is having a an emergency in terms of uh, liquidity needs? So you really want to be very strategic here. OK, especially if you are planning to apply for a PenFed credit card, you want to uh, you want to space this applications out. In other words, if, for instance, you want to apply for a PenFed credit card in uh, March or May or June, you want you want to have your last the last time you get a hard pull around February, three to four months is really good. OK, you want to space this out. And it's important to understand that applying for credit sporadically is not just going to help you get approved for a PenFed credit card. This is just good financial routine. This is good financial discipline. All right. You want to get into in a situ in, a, in a mindset where you are looking at credit as a chance to get liquidity, but also a chance to better your financial routine to improve your financial habits. So anytime you apply for credit, you have to look at it as a new homework, as a new assignment in how you manage credit, how you manage, uh, how you manage your uh, credit cards, how you manage a personal loan, how you manage a personal line of credit. Okay. So apply for credit spor sporadically. You want to make sure that it is needed, especially when we talk about credit cards. So this section is kind of set is kind of related to what I said earlier about how many credit cards should you have? And big decision time. Let me ask you a question. Big decision time. How many credit cards should you apply for in a day? <laughs> you know, the funny thing is we hear this, we see this in forums and we see this on YouTube. People talk about you can apply for multiple credit cards. As long as you uh, do those, you process those applications within 24 hours, those will count as only one hard pull. Not true, my friend, not true. If you apply for 10 credit cards within a day, you're going to have 10 hard pulls on your credit. All right. And the only the only time when uh, multiple hard pulls count for one is when you are applying for a car loan or you are applying for a mortgage. Why? Because credit card, uh, credit, uh, credit card bureaus, <laughs> credit bureaus, Experian, Equifax and TransUnion, they know that you're not buying a car you're not buying multiple cars they know that you're not buying multiple homes so they will count all those inquiries as one but if you are actually applying for a credit card or multiple credit cards within a day they know that you could actually get three or four or five credit cards they know that so those funding products are different all right that's think that's what you need to think about so if anybody tells you you can apply for 10 credit cards or five credit cards within a day and you will not suffer heart pulls that's this person is lying to you it's important now you have to understand that some credit card issuers have restrictions right we spoke about the 524 the chase 524 rule so this is important you also need to think about the bank of america they they also have a, a 234 rule now those rules are not written you will never find them anywhere because those are confidential. Those are those are proprietary, I would say, proprietary issuer rules. However, we have outsourced wisdom, outsourced expertise that has confirmed several times the 524 rule from Chase, but also the 234 rule from Bank of America. What is the 234 rule? You can only be approved for two cars within a 30 day period. 
three cars within a 12 month period and four cars within a 24 month period. Okay, so this rule applies only to Bank of America credit cards, but not all credit cards. So if you have taken out four cards from other credit issuers in the past year, you can still apply for a new card with Bank of America. But again, it's all about you thinking about what really works for you. So there are restrictions, whether you talk about Capital One credit cards, Chase credit cards, CD credit cards, Discover credit cards, or Wells Fargo credit cards for that matter, okay? Hack number five. So hack number one, you want to reduce your uh, your DTI. Hack number two, you want to lower your CUR. Hack number three, you want to lower your, your card count. Number four, you want to apply for credit spor sporadically. And hack number five, you want to boost your PenFed NPR. This is so important. Again, when we talk about NPR, we are speaking about a multi-product relationship. If your goal is to get a credit card from PenFed and be approved right away, you want to show them that you have money. You want to show them that, that you are willing to do business with them. You have to understand for PenFed or for any other credit card issuer for that matter, giving you a, giving you a credit card is a risk for them because you can default on, on the uh, balance too. So you, you want to have a win-win situation. Okay. And when we talk about PenFed, this is a great credit union. They are one of the largest federal credit union in the nations. And uh, when we think about asset and membership, they are right behind um, Navy Fed. Okay. And what do we like with PenFed? The premium online savings account offers a top tier APY annual percentage yield. The checking account is interest bearing and earns a highly competitive yield. Checking or savings account can be opened with a low minimum deposit and you have tens of thousands of free ATMs are available. One thing I want to say is that PenFed has a, a military affiliation, but you don't need to be a service person. You need to, you don't need to be a service member to qualify. Okay. You don't need to be in the military to qualify. And what do we not like with the PenFed? Well, the yield on their basic savings account is slow and the credit union's network of nearly 50 to 100 branches extend across just 13 states. So this is really, uh, but they, they do offer a variety of products. And I want you to look right now on the screen. When we talk about NPR with PenFed, we are speaking strictly about deposit accounts. Please don't listen to people who are telling you that NPR includes loan accounts, liability accounts, such as car loans or mortgages or lines of credits or personal loans. No, when we speak about NPR, we're speaking strictly about deposit accounts. We're speaking about checking accounts, savings accounts, certificates, IRAs, all that kind of stuff. And you can see on the screen here that with the PenFed, you have a constellation of products that you can choose from. So you can, you have, uh, when it comes to checking, you have free checking, Access America checking, among others. For savings, you have access to premium online savings, regular savings, money market savings, among others. For certificates, you have money market certificate. You have Coverdale education certificate, among others. For investment accounts and retirement accounts, IRAs, you have IRA certificate, IRA premier. You have IRA savings accounts, among others. So here you have it. You have uh, several products to choose from, but you want to boost your PenFed NPR. All right, folks, this is it for today's conversation. I was talking to you about PenFed credit card approval, the top five hacks that get you approved right away. The first one, you want to lower your DTI. Number two, you want to lower your CUR. Number three, you want to lower your, your card count. Number four, you want to apply for credit sporadically. And number five, you want to boost your NPR with PenFed. Thank you so much for your attention. I'll speak to you another time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.